It's time for a new DT Daily. I'm Casey Montoya. Coming up, Google Maps goes 3D, Virgin Mobile gets the iPhone, Microsoft shuns HTC, a solar-powered airplane makes the first ever intercontinental flight, the Olympics come to YouTube, and more. Google debuted Wednesday significant updates to its Google Maps service. The biggest new feature, 3D view, which allows users to get a more realistic look at select metropolitan areas. Google also plans to expand its street view feature, which will now go off-road thanks to a new wearable backpack camera. That will provide a first-person perspective to hiking trails, ski slopes, and walking paths. And finally, Android users will soon be able to access Google Maps offline on their mobile devices. That will allow them to get directions even if they don't have a wireless signal. Google's unveiling comes just ahead of Apple's big worldwide developers conference. That's where the company is expected to debut its own Maps app, which will take the place of Google Maps on iOS devices. Virgin Mobile USA announced today it will begin to offer iPhone 4 and iPhone 4S on a no-contract basis. That makes it the second prepaid wireless carrier to land the coveted Apple handset. Virgin Mobile, which is owned by Sprint, will offer plans that start at $30 and go up to $50 for unlimited text, talk, and data. There's no discount on the phone, however, and iPhone 4S on Virgin will cost you a full $650 or $550 for the older iPhone. The company's announcement comes just days after Cricket Wireless unveiled its own prepaid iPhone offering. That'll launch on June 22nd. Customers can pick up an iPhone on Virgin starting on June 29th. Once king of the Android world, smartphone maker HTC has hit a rough patch. On top of plummeting profits and drops in revenue and market share, the company suffered another blow Wednesday at the hands of Microsoft, which has reportedly decided to exclude HTC from the initial development of its new Windows RT mobile operating system for tablets. The reason? Microsoft doesn't believe HTC has enough experience in the tablet market to qualify. That's according to unnamed sources who spoke to Bloomberg. This doesn't necessarily mean HTC will be left out for good, but it appears it will have to wait some time before launching a Windows-based tablet. This week, pilot Bertrand Picard made the first ever intercontinental flight in an entirely solar-powered airplane. Picard's single-seat plane, called the Solar Impulse, flew around at 44 miles per hour at a height of 27,000 feet from Spain to Morocco, located across the Strait of Gibraltar in eastern Africa. When asked why he made this record-breaking trip, Picard said he wanted to revolutionize the way people think about energy issues. In other news, the Environmental Protection Agency this week awarded the 2013 Honda Fit electric car with a mileage rating equivalent to 118 miles per gallon. That makes the new Fit EV the most fuel-efficient car in the U.S. When the London 2012 Olympic Games kick off on July 27th, you won't need cable to watch the Games. The International Olympic Committee announced this week the Games will stream on YouTube in 64 territories around the world, most of them Asia and Africa. Olympics fans in the U.S. can also stream the competition on NBCOlympics.com. Lastly, professional social network LinkedIn confirmed yesterday afternoon that about 6.5 million user passwords had been stolen and posted to the web. Soon after, security researchers discovered an additional 1.5 million passwords from dating site eHarmony had also been leaked online. If you use either one of those services, the companies recommend that you change your passwords immediately. And if you use the same passwords on other sites, you should change those too. That's it for today. If you're a gamer, be sure to check out ongoing E3 coverage, including behind-the-scenes looks at Halo 4 and Call of Duty Black Ops 2. And if the thought of Facebook making a profit on every move you make has been bothering you since the company's IPO, check back on Digital Trends later today when columnist Scott Sterling ponders whether or not we should really care.